Hello, and welcome to my introduction to Siemens Cinemaric Integrate Run My Screens. For anybody who is a long-term viewer, sorry for the delay. Uh, it's been a long couple of weeks. I have uh, been out on work projects, so I haven't had a chance to really make any content. But please stick around, and there will be a lot more to come. So without further ado, I want to get into this little pet project that's been bugging me for the better part of a few years. It's something that I've been trying to work on but haven't had a chance to and or much of a need to until recently when I was on site at a customer and found that they needed to do some specialty type calculations in their software for setting angle heads that requires calculation of sine and cosine for vector points and things like that. And the original solution was to use an Excel spreadsheet with all of the calculations built into it and then translate those into a detail screen on the tool offset page of the Siemens control. And I was able to circumvent most of that by creating a custom GUI screen for the Siemens control where the customer would just go in, put in the values that they were looking for, hit a button, and all of the calculations would then populate into the tool offset data page that they needed for their vector points. So a brief example of what this tutorial series is going to entail. If I'm looking at the Siemens SinuTrain, which is an offline version of Siemens software, this is basically the exact same software that they would use on their control, but it's a PC version. If I go into MDI mode, which is where I have my screens hidden, and I press the right shift arrow key over here, you'll see that I get three soft keys, probing, test, and angle head. Under the probing soft key, it brings me to a screen for a custom cycle that I wrote for a customer that uses some of the basic Siemens probing logic but also some custom probing logic within the subprogram that I had written to touch the top surface of the part, rotate the tool head, come up from underneath, touch underneath the part, and then calculate the distance from top to bottom, which will essentially set the datum plane to the top surface of the piece based on the Z offset value here. So in order to run this prior, they would have to remember all of the parameter inputs to insert into the parentheses. Whereas now with the easy screen, they can put in the working diameter that they wish to measure their part with. They can set their Z offset value for how deep to go into the bottom of the part, measure from the bottom up. Select the probe that they have in their machine. They have two probes and they wish to switch between probe one and probe two. Then after hitting the accept button, if I go to auto mode, you'll see that it automatically populates the auto screen with measure, underscore bottom, underscore up, the parentheses with all of the parameter inputs. And if I go back to MDI probing and change this from probe to probe two, Hit accept, accept the change to the file, go back to auto. We'll see that the program has now been repopulated with the necessary parameters. So how did we get to here? That's what we're going to cover in this tutorial series. This is going to be at least a four or five part series because there's a lot of information to absorb. So stick around and hopefully we'll all learn something together. So let's talk about some of the fundamentals that are involved with creating, as they call them at Siemens, easy screens. The easy screens are multi-part files that get compiled at runtime. So when you load the screen by hitting the soft key, it then starts to compile all the information to load each of the screens as you go in and create each one. And then that being said, as you enter and exit an easy screen, the compiler will then do error checking to see if there are any issues with that screen that you're currently running to see if you need to make any fixes or changes or anything like that. 
I found that a good software to use for debugging the Siemens Easy Screens is Notepad++. The reason for that is that whenever you load up a new screen, you'll get a little warning, as you may have just seen. If I load this screen up, I go to Notepad++, and you're going to see that it's going to say, this file has been modified by another program. Do you want to reload it? And when you say yes, all of the errors that are created are then loaded up into Notepad++. So if you press a button or if you try to perform a command and it's not working properly or it's not working at all, or if you load up a screen and half of the stuff that you created is missing, you can go into Notepad++ and see right away that there may or may not be an error or you can see what the error is. It is a little bit archaic. It's not as good as a commercial C compiler, or C++ compiler, or something like that, where it'll tell you explicitly what is wrong. It'll kind of give you a roundabout answer as to where you should look. But it's enough that you can troubleshoot what your code is doing or what is going wrong. So that being said, if you don't have Notepad++ on your computer, please install that if you have Sinutrain running. If you don't have Sinutrain running and you're trying to do this at the control, you're gonna have some issues only because you have to go to a file folder. If I go into here, the file folder on the control is gonna be a little different than on Windows system with Sinutrain, but it's around the area of Program Files x86, Siemens, Motion Control, and then you go into HMI, User, Sinumeric, HMI, and then look for a folder called Log. And inside of there, you have the easy screen log.txt. Once you create a screen and you try to debug it, what you'll have to do is open up this easy screen log periodically and see if there are errors that are getting accumulated inside of here. The downside to the easy screen error log is that every time you enter and exit a screen, that log updates. So it doesn't create a running compile error. It just creates an ad hoc kind of. So you can see right there, if I enter my angle head screen and I go to Notepad++, it changes the log file, I hit yes, and it shows that there's no errors. So getting back to what I was saying before about what my screen actually did for this customer, my main menu just shows a picture of the angle head. It says, please choose from the menu on the right. I have a little title up here, it says main menu. Inside of horizontal head, it has the title of the screen here, horizontal angle calculations. And then up in here, I have some data for each of the input boxes. If I hover over this box here, it gives me a pop-up. You can also create help files with uh, HTML. I haven't done that with this, but you can create them with HTML. If you look at the Siemens website, there is actually a, there's actually a manual or a multitude of manuals for the Sinumeric Integrate Run My Screens. The one I'm looking at right now is as new as version 4.94. But again, I'm using version 4.5 and there are differences between 4.5, 4.7, 4.8, and 4.9. I do have a version 4.5 manual as well. If anybody needs this, please let me know and I can send it to you. In the older manual, there's a lot of mistakes, and it's really hard to follow what they're trying to tell you when the samples they give you don't work. So they did clean up some of the stuff, but again, you have to watch out for the fact that they did change some of the syntax, or they added some syntax. As an example, I can create an ellipse shape inside of my screens but I can't create vertical and horizontal separators. So I can do an elliptical shape, which is not listed in the 4.5 manual that I have. It only shows rectangle and line, but 
between 4.5 Service Pack 2 and 4.5 Service Pack 6, which is what my sinew train is set up for. They added the ellipse functionality so I can add circles or elliptical shapes, whereas a couple of versions prior, you couldn't do that. So there are a couple of files that you have to maintain whenever you're creating easy screens. And those files consist of, if I go back to my directory here, those files consist of inside the project folder, a .com file. In my case, I've got multiple .com files, one called soft key master. And if I open that up, we'll see that I have some logic here that points to using the bottom up.com, calculator.com, anglehead.com. We're going to get into what all of this stuff means shortly. Just know that the .com files are then pointing to anglehead.com, calculator.com, and bottomup.com. I've got a couple others in here that I was just messing around with. The .com file is loaded by this easyscreen.ini file. If I load this up, you'll see right here that I have under start files. I have a couple of them that are commented out, but I have start file 14 equals area, area program edit, and then under dialog SL program edit, menu, SL step standard mill menu, start file softkeymaster.com. I'm actually loading softkeymaster.com in multiple areas, but again, most of them are commented out. I have it loading into the MDI menu, and I have it loading into the program edit area of the standard mill menu. So if I go into program, if I'm in program edit and I hit right shift, you'll see that I get the same three keys, but now they open up in large view. If I'm on the machine menu, under MDI, I go probing, I get it into the small view here. But the angle head one opens up in full screen view. And there's ways that you can manipulate your setting data to accomplish that. In version 4.5, each screen set requires you to upload your photos into their respective resolution folders. So in the case of this screen here, which is under 1280 resolution, I have to load my picture files into ICO 1280, which you'll see here I've got a bunch of photos that I'm using inside different screens. With the new version of Easy Screens, there's some adaptive scaling that gets involved, and I don't have that functionality, so we're not going to cover that. But again, if you look in the newer manuals and you're dealing with newer software you do have a couple of newer options that i don't have and i'm not going to show in this tutorial series unless i get a license upgrade which i'm hoping for if you're running a pc with sinew train to access this folder you go to c siemens sinew train pick your version in my case 4.5 service pack 6 HMI, OEM, Cinumeric, HMI, and then here are your project folders. The HLP folder is where you store your help files. ICO is where you store your pictures. CFG is where your easyscreen.ini file will reside. And then PROJ is where you store your .com project files. There are other things you can do with easy screens, such as PLC bit manipulations and things like that. But again, that, that's a little bit out of the scope of what we're trying to accomplish here.